Let's get started on today's notes over linear inequalities. A linear inequality is like a linear equation, but it has an inequality symbol instead of an equal sign. So you're not gonna see something like this. You're gonna see a greater than sign, a greater than or equal to sign, a less than sign, or a less than or equal to sign. Solutions to linear inequalities are any ordered pair, remember that's x comma y, I have two variables, that make the inequality true. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tell whether each ordered pair is a solution to the linear inequality, and we're gonna do this algebraically. So if the solution, when I plug in this x value and this y value, and I plug it into this inequality, if I end up with a true statement, then that ordered pair is a solution. So we have the ordered pair 3, 9. I'm going to plug in 9 for y, and I'm going to plug in 3 for x. And then I'm just going to simplify this. So 9 is greater than or equal to 15 minus 6, and 15 minus 6 is 9. Is 9 greater than or equal to 9? It is. So yes, this is a solution. Now, I do want to point something out that if this said something like 9 is greater than 9, is that a true statement? This would not be a true statement. So that ordered pair wouldn't work if that or equal to um, line underneath that inequality symbol if that wasn't there. So you really have to pay attention to the inequality symbol. So let's look at number two. I have this ordered pair right here, negative 4, 2. And I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x, so 4 times negative 4, minus, and I'm going to plug in 2 for y, is it greater than 6? And I'm just going to simplify this. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, and so I'm writing it out like this, negative 10. So it's like negative 16 minus 10. Is it greater than 6? Negative 16 minus 10 is negative 26. Negative 26 is greater than 6. Is that true? No, that is not a true statement. So this ordered pair is not a solution to this linear inequality. So let's move on to graphing linear inequalities. When we graph a linear inequality on a coordinate plane, we're graphing it on a coordinate plane because there are two variables, which means we need two number lines, the x and y axes. So if you look at this coordinate plane down here, we have the x-axis, that's just a number line, and then we have the y-axis, that's our vertical number line. So we will use the graph of the related equation as a boundary line, and then we're going to shade above or below the line to show all possible solutions for the variables. So because we have an inequality, just like when we dealt with inequalities back in our previous unit, we had one number line we saw for x and we shaded on the number line. We're going to do the same thing here, but we have two number lines, so we have a coordinate plane. So here's how we graph a linear inequality. The first thing we have to do is convert the inequality to slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, but we're not going to have an equal sign there, okay? We're going to have an inequality symbol. Then we'll graph the line on the coordinate plane but there are some stipulations here. The first being the actual line, okay? The line can either be solid or it can be dotted. So if you have a symbol that's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, the line is going to be solid. If you have just a greater than sign or a less than sign, your line is gonna be dotted. So let's actually do that first. Let's go ahead and look at this example over here, and we're gonna graph y is greater than 2x minus four. So hopefully you're pretty good at graphing lines now. If not, then you'll get some more practice with this unit or this lesson. So 2x minus four. The first thing I'm gonna do is graph my y-intercept of negative four, and then my slope is positive two. So from that beginning point, I'm gonna go rise two, run one. Rise two, run one. Rise two, run one, keep doing that. Now, this inequality symbol is just a greater than sign. So this line, is it going to be solid like that, or is it gonna be dotted? It's going to be dotted. So you might have a dashed line that looks like that. 
it's not connected, okay? And it's kind of like when we graphed on one number line, do you remember when you had an open dot or you had a closed dot? Closed dot, you shaded it in. And what that meant was that if you had something like, there we go, if you had something like x is greater than three, you had an open dot at three. Let's say that's three, two, one. You had an open dot at three and you shaded to the right. If it was greater than or equal to three, well now we're including the number three in our solution set, so we shaded it in. So this dashed line means every ordered pair on this line is not a part of the solution set. It is not included. So for example, this point right here, two zero, is not a solution to this linear inequality. If I plugged in the point two zero in for x and in for y, I would end up with a no statement. It would not be a true statement. So now let's talk about the shading. We shade from this line because it's an inequality, we are gonna be shading. We shade above for greater than and greater than or equal to. Okay, so we're shading above for greater than and greater than or equal to. We're going to shade below for less than and less than or equal to. So I have these two inequality symbols, and it really helps students a lot when you write a greater than symbol up top and a less than symbol down here, because now I'm going to show you what you do. You're going to take your pencil and put it on that line, and because it's y is greater than 2x minus 4, put your pencil on the line and go up. This is the area that I shade everything above this line, okay? Everything above that line is in the solution set for this linear inequality, okay? So let's move on to our next set of examples. Now, this next set of examples, it says graph the linear inequality on the coordinate plane provided, then determine if the ordered pair given is a solution to the linear inequality circle yes or no. Number three says y is greater than 3x minus 2. So I'm going to graph 3x minus 2. I'm going to go down 2. That's my y-intercept. And then from there, my slope is 3. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. My slope just looks like that. And I can go down this way as well. Now, we need to determine... This is a greater than sign, symbol, greater than. So greater than means my line will be dotted. So I just do a little dashed line like this. And then do I shade above or below? Remember, greater than we go up, less than we go down. Greater than, so I'm going to shade everywhere above this line. My students always really like to use matte pencils, colored pencils, um, during this particular concept. So again, and I'm actually going to do it in a different color. This is a dashed line. Every ordered pair on this line is not included in the solution set. So 5, negative 2. If I, I start at my origin, I go right 5, down 2. Is that in the shaded region? No, it is not. So it is not a solution to this linear inequality. Let's move on to number 4. Y is less than or equal to negative one-half X plus one. So I'm going to graph my Y-intercept. That's positive one. My slope is negative one over two. So I can go down one and over two this way. And I'm just graphing points that are on this line. And I graph all points on the line that are on my coordinate plane. I've done that since I learned this myself when I was in high school. Now, is this going to be a solid line or a dotted line? Because of this or equal to down here, less than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So I graph it just like I would a regular equation. But because it's an inequality, I'm going to shade. Remember, if it's greater than, we shade above. Less than, we shade below. This Students don't really necessarily need those little symbols whenever you're line is a little flatter, but if you get those steep lines, uh, students tend to have trouble with that. So this really helps. Put your pencil on the line and we go down to the less than symbol. So everything down here in this shaded region or on the solid line is in the solution set. So the point two zero, is that in the solution set? 
two zero is right here. It's actually on the line, but because the line is solid, this is a solution. If I plug in two for X and zero for Y, I will end up with a statement that is true. And we saw how to do that algebraically, and now we're looking at it graphically. Let's move on to number five. So number five is our first example where we actually need to solve for Y. So the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract 2x from both sides, move the entire x term over, 6y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 12. And then I'm gonna divide everything by six and I get y is greater than or equal to negative 1 third x plus two. And now let's graph it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is graph negative 1 third x plus two. So I'm going to go to my y-intercept, or I'm gonna graph the line y equals negative 1 third x plus two. Go to my y-intercept at positive two. My slope is negative one over three. See negative one, and I literally say it out loud, over three, negative one over three. Okay, and I can go up over three this way. And then if you ever start graphing your lines and then you know your line looks something like that and you, your slope is negative oh you went the wrong, wrong direction erase it and regraph it so now there's this or equal to is my line solid or dotted it is solid and do we shade above or below because it's greater than or equal to there's greater than there's less than i'm going to put my pencil on this line and go up to that greater than symbol and i'm going to shade this some students like to use highlighters also. So negative eight, nine, if I go to negative eight, nine on this coordinate plane, that point is right up there. Is that in the shaded region? It is, so is it a solution? Yes, algebraically, if you plug in negative eight for X and nine for Y, you would end up with a true statement. Let's move on to number six. Number six, again, another example where I need to solve for y. So let's subtract 4x from both sides, and I get negative y, and a lot of students, if you wanna put a one in front of that y, you absolutely can, is greater than negative 4x plus five. What do I need to do now? I need to divide everything by negative one. When we divide by a negative, what do you do to that inequality symbol? You flip it, so instead of greater than, it now becomes less than. Negative four divided by negative one is positive four x. Five divided by negative one is negative five. So let's graph this line, the line y equals four x minus five on the coordinate plane. So I'm gonna graph my y-intercept at negative five. My slope is positive four, up one, two, three, four, over one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just graphing a bunch of points. And this is a fairly steep line. So this tends to be where students struggle more with the shading, but I'll show you what that looks like. So is it a dotted line or a solid line? Because it's just less than and not less than or equal to, it is a dotted line. So we just do a little dashed line. There's gaps in it to let you know that points on the line are not included. So now let's talk about shading. Do I shade above or below? Well, as these lines get really steep, students struggle with this because it kind of looks left and right. Again, put your pencil on the line and go down to that less than symbol, and that's the side that you shade on, okay? Everything over here is in the solution set, is negative one four over there, which is right there. No, it is not. So it is not a solution to this linear inequality. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven says y is greater than negative three. Well this, there's no x value, and we know this is a horizontal line. Every single point on this line, the y value will be negative three. It's a horizontal line, so what I do because we're dealing with y's, I go to my y-axis and I put a point at negative three. And I know it's gonna be a horizontal line through that point. The question now becomes, is it dotted or solid? It's just greater than and not greater than or equal to. So we've got a dashed line here. 
And then now, do we shade above or below? Well, this part tends to be fairly easy. Do we shade above or below? We shade above. Every point above this line is a solution to this linear inequality. However, no point on that line is a solution, right? Because we don't have that or equal to. So 7, negative 3. Let's plot the point 7, negative 3. And that's right here. It's on the dotted line. Is it a solution to this linear inequality? No, it is not. If it were a solid line, it would be. Let's move on to number 8. Number 8, there's no y value, but I need to get x all by itself. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And I get x is less than or equal to 3. Because there's no y value, I know this is a vertical line. And we're looking at our x-axis number line. So I'm going to plot a point at 3, 0, right? That's where x is 3. So it's a vertical line through that point. Is it solid or dotted? Well, we have this or equal to, so it's going to be solid all the way down. Whoop. And now, because it's an inequality, we've got a shade. So which way do we shade? Well, I love these vertical lines because this is saying less than, and that's like an arrow, right? Which way am I going to shade? To the left, because everything to the left of this number line is where all of my x values are less than 3. Everything over here. So now I'm looking to determine if 0, 6, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here on my coordinate plane, is that a solution to this linear inequality? It absolutely is. If you plug in 0 for x and 6 for y, you would end up with a true statement. And actually, you wouldn't plug anything in for y. You would just plug in 0 for x. So that concludes your notes over linear inequalities. I hope it was helpful.